Good afternoon and welcome to the State of the Cities Address. It's my pleasure to, uh, to be here and introduce our, our mayors in a few minutes. Uh, before we do that, I want to remind you to silence your phones uh, if you have them with you. Uh, additionally, if you have questions, uh, there are forms that can be handed out uh, to you where you can write a question for the mayors during the Q&A. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rex Fuller. I'm the president at Western Oregon University. Uh, we're pleased to be here and be part of this program. Uh, many of you know that uh, during this three and a half years that I've been uh, in this, the city of Monmouth and also the community here, uh, Independence and Monmouth, uh, when Susan and I moved here to take the position, uh, the university went through a planning process of its own and tried to identify strategic goals uh, going forward to 2023. The tagline for our plan is, is forward together. And it talks about moving uh, in directions that are um, more in sync with the communities that uh, we, we hold so dear. And it seemed to me that forward together is probably a good byline for the conversation we're about to have with our mayors because I know that they are looking for ways to, to have uh, cooperation and synergy and uh, leverage. The university stands ready to be a part of that process. I've always believed that the university serves its citizens best when we're connected to the communities that we live in and serve. Uh, and so we're just lucky to be here in Independence and Monmouth uh, and be part of this process here in the mid Willamette Valley. Uh, the order of presenters will be the mayor of Monmouth first and then followed by the mayor of Independence. Uh, I'll introduce them both briefly now. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Mayor Cecilia Kuntz, uh, who was elected uh, last fall uh, to the term of office, and she began here in January. Uh, she'll be speaking first. Uh, followed by a, a, a more seasoned uh, mayor, in the sense of at least the terms of office, uh, John McArdle, uh, here in Independence, that many of you know. I know you're about to hear some great things about how we can work together. Uh, and again, it's my pleasure to be here and be part of this program, and we look forward to the Q&A uh, that will follow. Uh, so welcome, and uh, Mayor Coons. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Um, I'm just glad the snow hasn't interrupted us so you can all get home and settled in before that happens. Um, I am, uh, as uh, Dr. Fuller said, uh, the newly elected mayor of Monmouth. I also think pretty much every one of you knows that I am on the board of trustees of Western. I was very pleased to be invited to join that body and currently serve as the chair of the Finance and Administration Committee and also as the vice chair for the Board of Trustees. That and my work as the director of finance and operations at the Central School District um, is, I see this as a great opportunity, as Rex said, to move forward together. So uh, I wanna um, let you know a little bit today about where we are in this process of uh, moving forward together. And after many years out there in the audience with you all as a part of our two cities, one community, I am, uh, find this a great honor to stand up on this side of the podium and represent the city of Monmouth. I would really like to thank the board of the Chamber of Commerce and Vicki Fetters Delfino. Uh, she's done some excellent work with the chamber, a great asset to our community. And I am really proud that Mon the city of Monmouth is a major sponsor of the chamber and visitor center and look forward to continuing that work. Typically, uh, the screen you see here is filled with pictures of buildings and things in various stages of completion, but I don't claim to have an edifice complex, and so this will be a little bit different. I really want to talk about a very different kind of building block, the bedrock of community building, which I believe is partnerships. So I would like to say, uh, I think government is a team sport. It is, uh, no one can do it alone. You can be a professional or an amateur, pay doesn't really make a difference. It takes training and practice to do it well. Some people have a talent for it. Others just have to work really, really hard just to get in the game. There are, uh, Instances where good coaching and high expectations make all the difference. And there are super fans and super, super loud critics. Um, 
every time, every play, small, big, all at once, you just can't win sometimes. But most importantly, everyone on the team has an important role to play. So I would like to take my opportunity in your time today to celebrate the players that have helped Team Monmouth achieve its goal over the last few years. First, I would like to recognize my predecessors, living mayors, Steve Milligan, John Oberst, Larry Dalton, Joe Pressler, Judge Bill Horner, Representative Paul Evans, and Mark Nelson. I am humbled in their presence. I'm also really honored to have known the only other woman mayor of Monmouth, Gail Gangler Myers, who was appointed and served a short time in the position. I have a lot of friends and mentors who have served on the council, including my current teammates, some of them are here today, Darren Silbernagel, John Carey, Laurel Sharmer, Byron Schinkel, Roseanne Belts, and our newest counselor, Chris Lopez. We have some really, um, really hardworking citizens and neighbors who volunteer for our advisory boards and commissions and our Monmouth engaged committees. We couldn't do it without them because they take the passion for a particular issue and they turn it into projects and policies that absolutely make Monmouth better. Last, I, uh, but not least, I must thank our small but mighty staff at the City of Monmouth with head coach Scott McClure. Each of our departments within the city works closely with each other, as well as with sister departments in the independents and a lot of our local, state, and regional agencies and partners. Today, I just have a few stories about some of the work we do. So at a basic level, partnership starts with networking. On a regular basis, we attend trainings with staff and elected officials from other cities to share information and learn about best practices in solving very difficult problems. Some of the examples of that are um, memberships in local service clubs, such as Rotary and Lions, but also memberships as part of our Chamber of Commerce or our economic development partner in the region, SEDCOR. We also network with other local cities. Um, for example, you may not know the Polk County mayors, including those from Falls City and Willamina, meet at a monthly breakfast to discuss issues specific to our region. The city belongs to organizations such as the League of Oregon Cities and the Mid Willamette Valley Council of Governments. Those are networks that provide technical expertise and they improve our efforts in the areas of governance, planning, policy, and advocacy. And we appreciate their support of Monmouth. Within the city, a great example of coordination of services is our police department led by Chief Daryl Tallon. The force works on a daily basis, daily basis, with their brothers and sisters in Independence, Dallas, and Polk County to form a strong defensive line for all of us. They don't give up the chase at a certain spot in the road. They all respond to major incidents, and they are each represented on a variety of task forces. For, for example, um, there is a major... Um, an increasing number of people of all ages in our community who are experiencing personal crises. And our police meet with community partners, including the Central School District, the student services and campus safety folks from Western Oregon, and with the behavioral and mental health specialists at Polk County. They review cases they know of, of um, people from youth to adults who are in crisis and who might pose a risk to themselves or others. Looking at those cases holistically rather than as potential law enforcement issues, it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of hard work. But it's been proven that those that work identifies and treats problems before they become community tragedies. In another example of prevention work, our officers partner with Woo's campus security team. They actually walk neighborhoods every fall. They meet with local residents, they meet with college students, and they talk about livability issues like noise, littering, bicycle safety, hopefully fostering a sense of respect and consideration for each other. 
Some more great stories of cooperation come out of our community development department. That team is headed by, uh, well, to be honest, um, if it was a team, our community development would be hockey with no goalie and four guys in the penalty box. Um, our director slash staff, Suzanne Duffner, is um, a, a, she wears a lot of hats and the, she really also wears her enthusiasm for cooperation like a bright, shiny uniform as she proactively tackles problems in the area of business development, land use planning, community gathering, livability, and growth. And here are just a few of the examples of the partnerships that she works on that Monmouth contributes to. Um, homelessness, a growing problem that cannot be contained within one area, one city, or even one county. Monmouth is working together with independents and with other entities across the river to fund a coordinator to study the lack of affordable housing and inventory the kinds of financial and educational resources available to tackle this problem. And they are looking at vulnerable populations, such as veterans, seniors, victims of domestic violence, and runaway youth. Uh, on the fun side, we've also chipped in to hire a coordinator for the Polk County Tourism Alliance. Nora Owings works with Travel Salem, the visitor centers, and the cities to develop things like the Willamette River Trail, which includes bike stations and infrastructure, and a Polk County Food Trail, an Artisan Makers Trail. They are sponsoring such events as the uh, Polk, Ta let's see, Tap into Polk County and uncork Polk County. Those are culinary weeks with lots of activities for our wineries and local breweries. The goals of the Tourism Alliance include increasing regional branding efforts, growing connections to Western Oregon University, and really further promoting the attractions and the activities that make this such an awesome place to visit. Uh, there's a group interested in alternative transportation issues, and they have convened to look at a type of trolley, a frolly, fake trolley, um, w which would serve our local community. It would provide a really fun tourist draw, and more practically, it might actually cut the number of us clogging up the streets to get from one end of town to the other, especially on the 4th of July, right? Yeah! <laughs> um, Someday, who knows, it might even really help that super daily giant traffic jam 16th and Monmouth intersection, right? Maybe we can figure that out too. So Suzanne also works with several boards and commissions. I, I can't even imagine how she does it all. Her schedule is likely far worse than mine for meetings. Um, but one of the groups she works with is our tree advisory board. They're celebrating their, I think, 18th year as a Tree City USA. That board ensures that we get trees planted um, and that hold, we hold an annual Arbor Day celebration. To do that, they rely on a partnership with the fine young athletes from Western who always show up ready to dig in and complete their service hours. Our historic commission has published a, um, some really cool materials for their walking tour, which provides information about the homes and buildings that reflect on the storied past. Our Parks and Recs Commission, a busy bunch of folks who oversee the use of our beautiful parks, including those we probably all know and love, such as Main Street, Gentle Woods, Madrona Park, and then the Recreation Park, which is the S-Curves and the Dog Park. Um, but there are also six lesser known parks, neighborhood and pocket parks. And the commission is always looking for ideas about how to promote recreation and park use and provide small grants for people with ideas about cool and interesting projects for Monmouth residents. Other volunteers with staff support from city recorder Phyllis Bullman, everybody gets in the act here, I said, small but mighty staff. They promote arts and culture in Monmouth, including some great partnerships with Western. Um, for example, each year the Arts Commission attends the student annual um, art display and selects a piece of work from that for the city to purchase and keep on permanent display. 
Of course, everyone pitches in for the 4th of July, but Monmouth is also home to one of the West Coast's best-known Christmas tree lightings. The University Community Connections Committee came out of our 2014 Monmouth Engaged process. And this year, those valiant volunteers gathered up partners such as the Monmouth Business Association and again the Chamber to put on a new event which will kick off the week of the annual tree lighting. Making Spirits Bright debuted on a chilly Saturday with music, a pop-up holiday bazaar, arts and crafts, and a fun new light display in Main Street Park. Downtown merchants offered specials and treats and uh, stamped passports. The following Friday, Wu students held their annual light parade and the 51st lighting of a once-touted tallest living Christmas tree commenced, marking the traditional start of the holiday season in Monmouth with fun activities for the whole family and a chance for the grown-ups to raise a glass of cheer. And Making Spirits Bright is just getting started. Yeah, good. We're getting a nod on that. The Monmouth Library, it's part of a partnership uh, known as the Chemeketa Cooperative Regional Library Service. So that serves Marion, Polk, and Yamhill counties and it allows our libraries to actually physically share assets. It shares their collections and offer a whole world of options to our patrons. These professionals work together to address the fast-moving world of educational media and changing function of libraries in our digital age. Director Chris Obrist and her team has also created an out-of-this-world partnership with NASA. Yeah, NASA. It's really cool. What started as an educational opportunity around the 2017 solar eclipse has turned into a STEM related... Uh, science, technology, engineering, and math related program and ongoing partnership to promote lifelong learning. Back down on Earth, kiddos still get some very special partners in the Mon this Summer Reading Program, athletes from Central High School who come to read and bond with young patrons. The work at the library is also supported by two groups of volunteers. We have the city's library advisory board and nonprofit friends of the Monmouth Library. Uh, they all provide their own programming and support through fundraisers like the annual book sale and the spring wine and poetry tasting, which is coordinated by Western professor and award-winning poet, Dr. Henry Hughes. We could not do this work without them. When you talk about teams in Monmouth, you just have to shout out the incredible volunteers at our senior center. Both the council appointed senior advisory board and the nonprofit Friends of the Monmouth Senior Center. These energetic, thoughtful, card playing, pancake flipping people are guided by a new face as Barbara Hogan took over for the beloved Sue Teal as director of our senior center. I, I'm always in awe of like the vision and the gallons of sweat equity that these groups take to keep, and, and it takes two, takes two groups to keep up with these seniors, um, that they have put in for decades to make our current senior center home to classes from crafts to Tai Chi to um, sign language, knitting and health education. Research in the field of gerontology shows that social interactions are critical to seniors in maintaining not only their physical and emotional health, but also their cognitive function. Um, and how do we know that? Some of that research took place right here in Monmouth with collaboration from Western Oregon University and our own senior center. The collaboration was started by Dr. Rob Winningham, uh, who I think just yesterday was named provost of the university as well. So we get to keep his talents here in town. Um, and this partnership continues because WU um, student interns provide services, including a brain builder class and training on the latest electronic devices and applications. So, I mean, we can all use that, right? Having college kids teach us this stuff. So our remodel remodeled building hosts uh, private parties, it holds public events, and I have to also, my final shout out for them, if you have never attended the Senior Center Soup and Pie Sale, which probably March 14th, I think, usually this second Wednesday or so, or Thursday, it 
you just have to go. Like, you are not living right if you have not had the salmon chowder and the pie at the senior soup and pie sale. So um, as a city, we value our collaborative role in MyNet, which was created to provide world-class broadband services that we couldn't attract from outside mega corporations. And it has become not only a driver of economic opportunity, but it has become the envy of rural communities around the nation. WIMPEG, which stands for our funding partners, Western, Independence, and Monmouth, and PEG is Public Education and Government Channel. Um, this cons consortium provides community services and community access to meetings and activities in our community via not only the channel on MyNet, but also YouTube. These days, it's more important than ever for citizens to really understand how government works to be able to see how decisions get made and to feel a part of the process. WIMPEG provides access to those who can't always make presentations like these. So I would like to thank Deborah Rizell and a variety of students and volunteers she have that are here at our civic meetings like city council and school board. It's really a vital way to plug people in in our community. Um, oh, but speaking of plugs, I'll just make one shameless plug here. If you have an event or you have regular events that you would like to record and broadcast, Wimpeg lends state-of-the-art video equipment and provides training. You could get that and and have all of your events broadcast. Um, or if you have one night a month and you want to help out, we would love to have someone volunteer to helm the camera at our school board meetings. So if you haven't know of anybody who might want to do that, see Deborah. One of the most exciting projects to me that we're involved in is actually one of the newest, and that is the Monmouth Independence Council Youth Mic. So that brings together partners in our community who ser serve youth, including both cities. We've got the school district, the university, and an organization called Community Services Consortium, which is headed up by Mona K. Hines. This uh, youth mic, the, the goal is to amplify the voice of youth in our community and create a really unique leadership opportunity to get them more active in the work of community building. And they have an information night scheduled February 28th, by the way, and I, I really can't wait to see where this group goes and where they take us as a community. So that's kind of the past. Um, what's ahead for our dynamic staff, council, and volunteers? Like many public entities, our finance department is heading, headed by the amazing uh, Janet Chenard, and our volunteer budget committee will be facing some pretty tough decisions as we enter the public budgeting process in the coming months. Oregon's way of funding local government is facing more scrutiny than ever, and yet we struggle to provide the kind of services our citizens want. Um, and I'm not sure that anyone really uses partner and ODOT in the same sentence, unless it's, you know, maybe filled with expletives. Um, but our public works department with Russ Cooper at the helm has been working closely with ODOT and its contractors on the project formerly known as OR99 Hoffman Road through the city of Monmouth. Um, I'm sure many of us have other names for that project. Um, and we're about six months into it. It will continue throughout the summer, but we'll end up by making improvements to the pavement, by increasing access to pedestrian ramps, and actually um, we'll include some traffic calming elements as well as Highway 99 passes through our town. Uh, and soon those folks in public works will have a bit more elbow room for all their equipment in the city shops as they will soon bid farewell to the Monmouth Power and Light Department. Uh, this is really the time of year we all like to stop and thank the Monmouth Power and Light Department, right? With the rain and the wind and snowpocalypse coming, we depend on Power and Light Superintendent Chuck Thurman and his team to keep us warm, lit up, and charged up. So soon, and coming in March, I think will be a ribbon cutting on their new facility, 
where we can actually finally safely and effectively meet the needs of the department, including a, an, a bay, a tall equipment bay, so the bucket trucks don't get hit while they're moving into the garage, um, and a place to dry out their wet gear. We're really looking forward to that. Suzanne has also been keeping our Volunteer Citizen Planning Commission very busy, uh, let alone our, our uh, planning, our ins building inspector, uh, Mr. Uh, Larry Thornton, has been uh, very busy with a year of robust residential development and some infill mul multifamily projects. Now they're doing the work of reviewing a new 119-unit apartment complex going in sort of along the edge of town, and this complex will provide uh, low uh, provide housing to some of our low-income seniors and citizens. The Planning Commission is also reviewing and planning the. Uh, building of Carl's Jr., right? The restaurant going up the corner of Main and 99. And they get to me among the first people in town, if you, you know, ever want to be on planning commission, to know the answer to burning questions like, what else is going in with Carl's Jr.? We don't know yet. The developers are working uh, with Suzanne. They're looking at some of their market options and hope to be announcing soon uh, uh, what they would put on that other pad. But more importantly, what is going on in the S-curves? Uh, the Ash Creek Retail Center is in the preliminary site plan phase. So we really don't have anything to announce yet as far as firm tenants, but it's really exciting to know that we will soon have additional commercial retail space to meet our community's needs. As a council, we rely on training, support, and the voices of our citizens to set our game plan and execute on a regular basis. Good government, like good teamwork, isn't easy. There has to be room for differences of opinions. But the best solutions are those in which we get those divergent viewpoints and experiences and take them into account. That's what builds strong networks, enduring partnerships, cooperative relationships, and the profound collaborations that are required in our interconnected world. It's really hard work, and it takes practice. And when people and organizations are working together, there are, there are sort of two factors at play, turf and trust. You have to give up one to gain the other. Giving up a little bit of turf to gain that trust takes time. It's like an athlete's muscle that must be stretched, allowed to relax, and it'll being flexed again, over and over and over again. You never get it right the first time. Here's my story about that. Last November, an incident of hate graffiti on the streets of Monmouth led to some difficult conversations in our community. Our police department responded. They found no evidence of it being the work of an organized hate group. That may have reassured some, but people who felt that the incident was downplayed, painted over, and swept under the rug by the city spoke out about how the symbols and words affected them and how they felt their safety wasn't taken seriously. There was discussion about sort of a community-based solution versus bringing in outside uh, groups and organizations who might bring with them a larger agenda. A jointly crafted statement was released by the leaders of Monmouth, Independence, Western, and the Central School District, affirming their stated values of honoring diversity and working towards true equity and, and inclusion. It is perhaps the first time leaders of all four organizations have united to speak out. It was their first practice as a team in working towards a common goal. At a forum sponsored by Wu's Associated Student Body, the joint statement was seen as too little, too late. In a recent march organized by the students from their campus to a park near the site of the graffiti with cooperation from the Monmouth PD and public works departments, included inspiring words and some criticism about the city's response. Participating in both that forum and the march reminded me that 
as leaders, we can and must do better to make sure that we are partners to all of our citizens and that our words must be backed up by our actions every single time. It's not an easy task. It's not easy as an individual. It's not certainly an easy task for an organization. And yet, I feel very, very fortunate to take on this role of mayor at this time. I look forward to that challenge. But most of all, I look forward to facing those challenges with Mayor John McArdle and his vibrant council and new staff leadership, with President Rex Fuller and the impressive team he has drafted to carry out their new strategic vision for both the university, the region, and our state. And with my boss, Superintendent Jennifer Kubista, and our colleagues at the Central School District, as we work to make sure our youth are engaged, supported, and educated as whole children, ready for college, career, and civic life. Today, I, along with my fellow counselors of the City of Monmouth, our staff, and our many volunteers, celebrate our most important partnership, and that's with all of you in this room. Having engaged and connected leaders, people who are, are passionate about this community. Give us the reason for doing the work we do to build Monmouth's future. Small town charm, world-class opportunity. I thank you for being here and for all you do and you will do, counting on it, to contribute to our success. Thank you. Well, happy Friday to everybody. It's good to see more than 70 people in the room today, and uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, I'm thrilled to see so many friends, and uh, is, this is wonderful. This is one of the days I really look forward to. I want to first start off by thanking the Independent Cinema for the use of today's venue. Let's give them a big round of applause. I also want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for providing this opportunity to share with the community. And I offer a hearty, personal welcome to Mayor Coons, Cease, and all of our friends from Monmouth. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you all here today, and we look forward to working together. Well, Independence is on a roll. And because of good planning and diligent efforts by so many people, our city staff at all levels, from public works to city manager, they're focused on customer service and moving forward. We're blessed with council members and commission members, all who are volunteers, whose passion and commitment have made great things happen. Thank you to those of you who are here who have made these things happen, and please extend that thanks to others that you know in the community that are doing those wonderful things. You know, we're reaping the collective rewards from years of preparation, vision, just plain old hard work. Our charge is to keep planning and continuing to work so we can keep rolling and building on our momentum. Jack Ritz once said, you know, you look at a stone cutter hammering away at their rock, perhaps a hundred times without so much as a crack showing, yet at the 101st blow, it splits in two. Now we know it's not the last blow that did it, it's all the work that's gone before. Now I've said it before, but we've been working hard for a long time to make Independence a great, livable small town, and it's working. Some of our most long sought community goals are posed to be achieved this year. These are exciting times in our community. Our revitalization efforts have created their own momentum. The Independence Hotel is on track for a June opening and the developer is submitting plans for the apartments that will follow. Young Development is preparing to break ground in Osprey Point, a 40,000 square foot mixed use development building right behind Brew on C Street. We're also putting the finishing touches on the new park in the lower floodplain portion of the Independence Landing property right below the hotel. 
I also think it's important to note that park was paid for entirely with grants. It's amazing what can be accomplished when everyone is brought into a vision. We've been working towards this moment for 20 years, and it's finally happening. The community was involved in the earliest stages, setting the vision, and it helped us form all kinds of partnerships to finally make it happen. An independent economic analysis found that the new hotel and apartments alone will bring $6 million in new spending annually to independence. Some people think we're pretty bold, but they don't know independence. People understand the opportunity. Downtown and businesses are vibrant and prospering. I'm personally pleased to see the long neglected Taylor's building being brought back to life with Jubilee. You know, as an Olympic athlete, I learned a long time ago that if you're not moving ahead, you're falling behind. Well, after receiving a National All-America City Award a few years ago, Independence has continued to be recognized for our accomplishments. We received a League of Oregon Cities Award for excellence, excellence from all the cities in Oregon just last year. These are just the latest of regional and national recognitions for our, re our revitalization efforts. Cycle Oregon announced last week that they're bringing their all-women joyride event to Riverview Park this June. That'll be 800 to 1,000 cyclists from throughout the West using Independence as a base for exploring Polk County. I know that our hospitality and quality of life will bring many of these folks back on later trips. Well, as always, <laughs> see, I don't even have to look at the picture. Independence Station remains a mixed bag, but I'm hopeful that progress is being made. The building was purchased a year ago by the same folks who developed Kaiser Station. We asked about plans for the development, and he said, and I quote, we're in the final stages of negotiating with an anchor tenant for the ground floor. We expect to submit plans in the spring with the intent to restart construction this summer. You know, we've had a lot of success in the recent past, knocking off long, lots of long-standing issues, and an independent station would definitely wouldn't be one of our biggest. <laughs> Cease mentioned it before, but I want to mention it also. Homelessness is an increasing problem throughout the state, and we in independence are not immune. And there aren't any answers easy ones at least, but I'm proud that we're working with Polk County, Monmouth, and Dallas to ensure there are warming shelters available when the temperature drops below freezing. We need to do more, but this is a great first step. You know, a year ago, we celebrated Pacific Power's first smart meter deployment by declaring February 10th Smart Rural Day. We're now modeling how rural communities can embrace technology and innovation as well or even better than many big cities. Now I gotta tell you, Pacific Power liked us so well, they put up Sean Irvine's picture, not just on a website, they put it on a giant billboard up in the metropolitan area. <laughs> Sean will be available for autographs after today's talk. You know, in the past year we've developed partnerships organize pilot projects, meetups, and work to build an innovation ecosystem in the region. Just the other night, over 60 people packed into Valkyrie for Fail Fest, an event to celebrate and learn from failures in business. And this work that we've done has not been unnoticed. I'm thrilled to announce that the Center on Rural Innovation chose independence as one of nine communities nationwide to participate in their Rural Innovation Initiative. With their help, we'll be planning and seeking funding for an innovation hub focused on agricultural technologies, data analytics, and training our kids for the jobs of tomorrow. MyNet, as you all know, is the heart of this innovation work. Both cities are still covering a portion of the MyNet debt that will ultimately be repaid over time but that number is decreasing, and I'm confident we're on the path to long-term stability. This last year, MyNet was hired to operate 
a new fiber system being built in Dallas, providing high quality broadband service that has spurred interest in innovation there as well. You know we're riding a wave of economic opportunity right now, reaping the rewards of the careful planning and work that we put in as a community over the last 20 years. We can't rest on our laurels. It's critical that we continue to plan and prepare for the future so that we don't lose sight of the community values and small town quality of life that have guided us for so long. I'm thrilled that we are launching a Vision 2040 effort this year. It's been 10 years since our last community-wide vision and action plan process, and over 1,000 people participated this last time. This makes for a strong community planning process. We've seen firsthand how much can be accomplished when you get everybody engaged in participating. Vision 2040 will be an effort to engage everyone in the community to do a pulse check to adjust and build in our collective vision and determine how we best keep independence moving forward. We also hope to use this planning process to forge closer relationships with our neighbors and community partners. I look forward to further developing our relationship with Monmouth and their new mayor. The school district also continues to be a critical partner as we grow and ensure that we remain a well-rounded community with quality education for our kids. The school district is doing their own planning work, forecasting future prop, uh, population growth, developing after school programming and laying out career pathways and career technical education. I'm happy that they see us as a partner and, we've invite, and have invited us to participate in their efforts because we are stronger when we all work together. Vision 2040 isn't the only planning that we're doing this year. The state has been updating its airport master plan for the independent state or airport, and we've been supplementing it with a targeted industry analysis to identify industrial users which might utilize proximity to the airport. We're also now in the middle of developing a master plan for Sunset Meadows Park in the new housing development between 8th and 9th Street in the south part of town. The first open house was a huge success with 40 people attending on a dark and cold and rainy night. The park just got a boost as we were named one of three finalists in Oregon for the Moda Center Assist Program. During the regular season, at Trailblazer Games, for every assist on the court that the Trailblazers make, Moda will donate $20 to building an all abilities playground in one of the three finalist communities. A popular online vote will determine the winning community. I will need all of you, all of your friends, and everybody you've ever met to participate. Now more information's coming soon because the voting will open on February 20th. So I encourage you to, like in Chicago, vote er early, vote often, and tell your friends. Independence has been growing fast and we're dealing with the consequences of that growth. We recognize that traffic is increasing in parts of town, both from our own growth, but more so from what's happening throughout the region. Later this year, we'll launch an update to our transportation system plan. Just like other cities in the Lambeth Valley, we need to make sure that our transportation system can get people where they want to go efficiently and safely. The plan will look at how to create more east-west connections and review our system development charges and our methodology to make sure development pays for itself. We're also working regionally to improve the efficiency and safety of highways that impact our community. There's recognition around the region of the safety challenges that Highway 51 and 22 and that interchange. This dangerous intersection doesn't just affect the people involved in a crash. It impacts our emergency responders, many of them who are volunteers and work for many of you. Bad intersections like this one can limit the economic development of our region. I'm proud to be working with the other cities in Polk County, Polk County itself, ODOT, and the Governor's Regional Solutions Team to find solutions to this carnage. I gotta tell you, I don't know all the answers. 
That's why we're reaching out to the community with all of these planning efforts. A well-organized engagement process helps us identify new ideas, potential partners, and generate the enthusiasm to get things done. The projects underway now come out of the last 10 years of community planning and engagement. Now is time to engage and plan for the next decades. A vibrant community is always changing and evolving. These new planning efforts will extend our community vision and continue to provide a clear direction to guide our work. When we finish the work that's underway today, we'll already know the direction and the tasks for tomorrow. I want to close on a personal note. Many of you know that I'm a naturalized citizen here in the United States. I wasn't born here. My mom and dad, dad was in the American military, picked up some kids at an orphanage in Germany. I take my citizenship very seriously. And so last week, I was thrilled and honored to be part of a celebratory naturalization ceremony we held at City Hall for Mid Valley residents who are brand new U.S. citizens. Those who attended were all touched by the pride and the optimism these new citizens exuded. The smiles on the kids, the families and friends made me feel confident and positive about the future of not just our city, our state, but our country. Our new citizens embodied the optimism and sense of possibility that is part of the culture here in Independence and our sister city, and that makes America the amazing, diverse, gifted country that it is. In Independence and our friends in the region, we are inviting, inclusive, warm, and friendly. We all pull together and make our community and our country a better place. This resonates far beyond our little town, and, the, and I'll tell you, people are voting with their feet. So what does this all mean? Independence is moving forward, showing the way for other Oregon communities, doing good things for our residents, our community, kids, businesses, those that are already here, and those who have yet to arrive. We've built on the work of those that came before us, and we work to leave a better community for those that will follow. I'm confident that our best years are yet to come. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Vicki Fetters Delfino, and I am the executive director of the Monmouth and Independence Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. I'm going to take this moment. My assistant, Chris, is somewhere out in the audience, and he is going to go and grab that basket and take any question submission forms you guys might have filled out during both the mayor's presentations. While he's doing that, I just wanted to take one more moment to thank Mayor Cease Kuntz and John McArdle for taking the time to come and speak to us, and, and for all of you for being in the same room at the same time. <laughs> is really, really a big feat. I also want to extend my thanks to Western President Rex Fuller for doing the welcoming um, for us and, and emceeing for us. I appreciate that he makes himself available um, when we need him as a bridge between both communities. Let's have the question for, for both mayors up first, how about? Um, the question says, uh, for Cease, what specifically would you like to work on with independence in the future? We already work on a lot of things together. That's that's kind of the hard part of this, is that there's already so much we do, both at a staff level and an elected level, and obviously with each of us in the businesses that we have in the community. So there's kind of a, that's, that's a little bit of a misleading question. What I really want to do together, um, I've told John that pretty much any time something good happens in independence, I, I'm going to be right there over his shoulder. And when something good happens in Monmouth, I want to look up and back and and see him there too, right? It's It's more about making sure that people see the visible connections we already have. That's the work to be done. And when times are tough, we're going to be there together too. I'm going to be joined at his hip, his hip and my shoulder. <laughs> Um, so I, that, that's, I think the bigger work. I, 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 you know, our, our community celebrations, the things we already do, just, just really presenting more of a unified front as we all benefit 
by the, bringing people here in our community, working with us and Western, like it's super powerful. And we just need to do a better job of telling the story. Second part of this question is from Mayor McArdle. And this person wants to know, how can we engage parents and bring them into council conversations? We broadcast our council uh, uh, meetings on uh, uh, YouTube. We also have it on the Independence website. So folks can stay at home taking care of kids walking, you know, who are doing homework. And so there is an opportunity there. You know, I have my home phone number in the phone book, you know, like I even have an old time landline, so if people have to call. People can send us emails, they can communicate uh, with us in lots of different ways. So if people have ideas, give us a shout, drop us a note, stop us when we're out and about. You're going to anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> you know, uh, although let's just not be in the meat department because it gets cold over there. Let's wait till we're in the produce department. But yes, you know, for parents to, who want to engage, let us know. Also work with your school folks. The school people talk with us. You know, as Cease was pointing out, we connect on lots of different levels. The school district has done a really nice job of connecting uh, with us and uh, as we work together, to, you know, because we all live here, we have to work together to do good things together. And, and that helps whether it's where school kids are going to school or how they're getting there. So we work together on all those kind of things and it really makes a difference. So just reach out, it's not hard. Pick up the phone, send us an email, one way or another, it'll work. Next question is, is just for John, or I'm sorry, Mayor McArdle. Why don't we have a sidewalk on Hoffman Road from a block west of Ash Creek Elementary to in front of Forest River? How does Forest River get a pass? Well, I know part of that is uh, not in independence uh, from at, oh, you're talking, I was thinking from Ash Creek School down that direction. So part of that, and a part of that's in the county. We're that, you know, I'm getting into the weeds on that. And uh, part of the, uh, when Forrester was built, that was the old Boise Cascade plant, if you recall. Um, they didn't have to put in sidewalks back in the before time. And uh, the before is all, you know, that's 50, 60 years ago. So um, we gotta figure out a way to do that. I know that's one of the areas that we're looking at is to try to put sidewalks on all the places where kids are moving. Um, I don't have a great answer other than um, now the questions brought up, now we can work with staff to see what the better answer is. That's my better answer. I, I will take this opportunity to say that there is another sort of issue with sidewalks in independence um, and especially moving kids that you mentioned. On a gun club, there is a nice section of gun club which really has a lot of traffic since it's between three of our schools in the school district, cities. Um, the cities, the county applied for a Safe Routes to School grant, and we are going to make a lot of improvements along Gun Club and actually along Hoffman to better serve the schools in that area. That just got announced a couple weeks ago. And thank you so much to our mayors again for being willing to answer those questions. If anything comes to any of you attendees this upcoming week, feel free to email the Chamber of Commerce or, um, or reach out to either city to get in touch with Mayor McArdle or, or Mayor Kuntz. And I know from firsthand experience, they're more than happy to sit down and grab a cup of coffee and, or a wine if the issue is serious enough and, and, and talk with you about it. I think one of the benefits um, that I have in getting to work with both of these small and really active communities is that everyone has time for FaceTime here. And I feel like that's extremely valuable, especially to me. I want to say once again, thank you so much for your time and for, and for attending and being a great audience. And, um, and that's it. Enjoy your Friday afternoons.